Oh, I guess we could talk about the, the ISIS prison attack in Russia. This story was wild and it got like got very little attention. I see like it's on mainstream news, but it's usually it's just like an article form. You know, it's not getting much attention. And I think it's it's not because of like some cover up or anything, as, as I guess an alternative media figure might usually say. Um, it's just because this is becoming so regular. The, the ISIS attacks in Russia, uh, this is like the third or fourth one in recent memory. Uh, they're becoming more frequent and it's not just ISIS that is active. There are other Islamist groups that are active too. There are other separatist organizations that are active. And we're not even talking about all the instances of arson or individual like killings of officers, police officers or soldiers, National Guardsmen. Um, we're just talking about like the big instances. So I cannot show you uh, the video that this originates from. In fact, I'll have to look at it off screen to tell you uh, what's in it because uh, it is very bloody. I this, think this I think I could show you maybe a single frame. Okay, I could show you this frame because this frame doesn't have any blood in it. So what happened is that some uh, terrorists that aligned themselves with ISIS. And so what they did, and this happens a lot, is instead of like, oh, this was like formally organized by like big, uh, big terrorists, Mr. Terrorists from, you know, ISIL top command. What happens is a lot of people will like lone wolf it or do it in little cells. And then as they do the attack, they'll declare their loyalty uh, in order to get more attention to it and in order to like project it in some direction in support of some cause. And so it could be that they were they were in talks with other terrorists it could be that they were their own cell and now they're just dedicating it to the group either way they say that they are part of isil isil has done attacks in shopping malls in in uh in russia they've done attacks in uh, the caucuses as well they have done a lot of activity uh in russia recently and russia has kept blaming it on ukraine whether it is an attempt to just pin more uh a violence and death on Ukraine to try to whip the public into supporting the war, whether it's to divert attention from their real security problems out in more uh, isolated communities in Russia, uh, whatever, maybe it's both, whatever the purpose is, they kept blaming Ukraine for what was obviously done by these terror groups that there has been no evidence that has connected them to Ukraine whatsoever. And these keep happening. And I, and I've kept saying, and this is something that should be a real concern for people in Russia. If you dedicate all of your security forces, uh, your FSB, police, you'll, you'll militarize police officers and send them into the war. You'll offer gigantic contracts as better, better than any contract you can get for serving in security in Russia to go to Ukraine and fight, sign those contracts. And I mean, the money's only getting higher and higher, three to $4,000 a month. That's massive in Russia. And then you grind those people up slowly. So you need to suck in more and more and more personnel, more and more and more equipment. That's going to strain your defenses elsewhere. Russia just pulled troops out of Kaliningrad to go defend Kursk. What does that mean about defenses in Kaliningrad? They've had to pull S-300s and S-400s out from out east to Ukraine to defend Crimea. What does that mean about the air defense in out east? They've had uh, police, uh, uh, police like offices and police centers out in Ukraine, I mean, out throughout Russia, staffed lower and lower because more of their people are getting better contracts going to Ukraine, are getting recruited to go to Ukraine, and it's either just better pay or they get dragged there some other way. And so they're having staffing issues. In fact, you, Russia has a gigantic manpower issue, a gigantic employment issue where they need more laborers and they have nowhere to get them at the moment. It's part of the reason why they're trying so much to hire foreign mercenaries. Not only because it, if that person dies, it's isolated from political fallout because they're not from Russia and so they don't have a family in Russia to be sad, but also they just don't have the manpower and they need to get manpower wherever they can. But what this means is that if there's a security crisis in, say, Kazakhstan, let's say protesters go wild and try to overthrow the government again, do they have the forces to go there? If there's, let's, let's say, the Dream Party in Georgia goes a little too far um, and then the, they're overthrown, do they have forces to go there and do something? Um, what if there is some excursion in Tajikistan? or anywhere else where they might need to send forces. Hell, they talk about the aggression of NATO expansion, but since Finland has joined NATO, 
80% of the forces that were on the border with NATO have been withdrawn and deployed elsewhere. Does Russia have the forces to respond to security crises outside of Ukraine after dumping everything they have available towards that war? And now the war, which was supposed to only go on for a few weeks, has been going on for two and a half years, going on three years, well, could go on into four years. Do they have resources to properly staff areas where there are terror threats? Do they are they concentrating their security resources on Ukraine or are they concentrating them on anti-terror efforts actually defending the Russian public? And so I think that's part of the reason why, you know, they're not giving it too much attention or when it is given attention, they somehow try to scoop it and try to include it as part of the war in Ukraine. Because if Russia is dedicating all these forces and all these resources to fight Ukraine, well, terror attacks going on in the country that these resources could be dedicated to fighting instead, that could come with a problem. Um, my goodness, it could come with a problem. Oof. Anyway, um, they, the people who took hostages, uh, they ended up killing a bunch of people. In the full video, you can see dead bodies on the floor, mostly prison guards and police officers. Uh, and then they demanded, uh, they wanted helicopters so they could flee away, and they wanted $2 million dollars in this in this prison break isis takeover terror attack well they didn't get that and the reason they didn't get that um is because putin of course was on the case here is the video from a meeting he had with government officials where he quickly had to address the situation as news was spreading about it online but he had not made an address but as he was making this address putin realized something that he forgot you'll you'll see it уважаемые коллеги добрый день Dear colleagues, head of the Federal Penitentiary Service, I asked him about the situation in one of the colonies in the Volgorod Oblast. I'd like to listen to evaluations of the FSB director and the Internal Affairs Minister. Zolotov will be here to report his estimations. And then we'll look at the planned issue raised by Kukoletsev. Let's start work with Kukoletsev. Start with the Internal Affairs Minister regarding the situation in Volgorod. So he doesn't seem too energetic. Uh, this almost feels like water off a duck's back at this point because Putin has taken so many low blows. His three-day operation has expanded into years. Three days, more like three years. Uh, Russia itself has been invaded. Terror attacks throughout Russia. Its economy is not in a great state. The support for the government is not e exceptionally high right now, even though it's not collapsing. It is on a slow decline. And the reserves they've had of Soviet stock are burning as other government officials get rotated in and out, in and out, in and out, as they try to find the solution. But that's not the main thing that caught my attention in this video. The main thing that caught my attention, the attention of many people, is Putin's wristwatch. Check this out. At the start, he covers his watch, then he stops and starts to take it off, and then removes it and puts it away before starting. Why would he take off this watch at the start? What's the purpose? Well. Uh, I think it might be because that watch is actually quite expensive. And so maybe he does not want to show himself, you know, wearing a gold watch, why the Russian public are going through economic destitution. In fact, this is not the first time I've seen something like this. In Russian propaganda, uh, they will actually blur out stuff like that often to try to, well, I can't really say often, but they have in order to try to cover up the wealth of the elite. Uh, the person I think of the most is Kirill. Kirill is a... Uh, uh, the head of the Russian Orthodox Church, which operates often as an extension of the Russian state. And there's this picture that was published by the Russian government of him just, you know, sitting, doing whatever. And if you look at his wrists, he's not wearing a watch. But if you look at the table, you can see that he is. But that somebody blurred it out, but forgot to get rid of the reflection on the table. 
So this is not the first time that a member of the Russian elite has been nervous about what the proles will think about their luxurious, you know, jewelry or watches, etc. I mean, Putin, one of the reasons I'm sure he didn't like Alexei Navalny was because Alexei Navalny, Navalny's anti-corruption center was publishing not only on corruption, corruption reports on Russian government officials, but also he was producing documentaries documenting, you know, Putin's life in excess in mansions, etc. Uh, so... That was a funny moment that I noticed as part of this press report. But eventually, uh, the inmates that took hostage, those people at the Russian prison, uh, were killed by Russian snipers, and the situation has stabilized. I believe the death toll is around six, um, and the inmates, there are around four of them, so I think that makes about a death toll of like 10 people, but we don't know for sure the exact death toll, just though that people did die, and this is just one more instance of ISIS terrorism in Russia getting out of control as Russia concentrates its security resources elsewhere. Mm. How are you guys doing today? You guys having a good night? I'm having an okay night. 